The Farm Journal Legacy Project presents Leave a Legacy. And now, your host, Kevin Spafford. Welcome to Leave a Legacy. There are five keys to planning success. Good communication, common objectives, readiness, a defined planning process, and commitment. The only thing missing is a sense of urgency. You have to add that. Everyone has pressing needs and a never-ending list of jobs. But if planning isn't a priority today, when will it be? Your family, the farm, employees rely on you. A comprehensive plan for succession will ensure that the farm continues when you decide to step away. This show is dedicated to that effort. Today, we're gonna to start with one of our case study families. Clinton Griffiths is gonna update us on the Mose in Watertown, South Dakota. Mom you know, gets used to it all. See, the only thing is when we first... The discussion is focused. No, back north is no, mom's that's, name. That's, that's mom's. The topic is clear. Trust on the home port. But the details, they're still fuzzy. We haven't even got it set up to transfer to between ourselves, let alone to the next generation. The Mose family of Goodwin, South Dakota, is still in the early stages of legacy planning for their 1,400 cow dairy farm. They thought they were in the later stages. We covered a lot of stuff that we thought was kind of in place, but it's all, it's all going to end up being kind of backwards in a way because it's, it's all counter, contradicting each other the way, the way we had it set up in our agreements. The operation wants long-term lease agreement when it goes down to the civil. We did planning and we did the estate planning uh, years ago and we thought everything was complete, everything will be transferred and it'll be all, uh, we won't lose anything. But when we come down to the, the whole nuts and bolts of it, uh, it has to be changed continuously. Founded back in 1884, the family has been milking near Goodwin for more than a century. Modak Dairy, as it goes by, milks three times a day. Modak Feeds manages some 3,000 acres of cropland to feed those hungry cows, and Modak Trucking moves the milk. Brothers Jim and Greg run the operation, and after years of work, they're serious about seeing it passed on to the next generation. Everything has changed on the family farms from when our folks did it and stuff, you know, yeah, it was just a mom and pop operation. Now it's a, now it's a business. It's, it's just a regular business. It's not just handing it over to a couple of kids and, and stuff. We're gonna be doing a pretty major overhaul, but it, we'll be able to sleep better at night knowing that we're actually providing what we, things the way we want them to go. We, we've worked all these years to build this up and we don't want to mess it up now. The family had what it thought was a working plan based on documents drawn up about two decades ago. Previously, buy-sell agreements, stock transfer agreements were written up under a subchapter S corporation. Then there's the land, so vital to feeding the dairy's cows. Jim and Greg have nine siblings. All are heirs to part of the family's land, although not active in the dairy business. Currently, Mother Eileen still owns several quarters. Another big chunk resides in a family trust. Add to it rising land values and the size of the dairy and situations have drastically changed. And uh, just to keep it together as a unit, and that's what we've all been after is this, and from the start is to keep it together as a unit because we need it for the, to sustain the dairy and stuff. So. And stuff no, that no, you that's buy. accountants and stuff. Was. Yeah. Their mother Eileen, now in her early 80s, came to listen as plans are being discussed. I really didn't know what to expect, but I'm very happy I came. With 11 kids, 34 grandkids, and now 44 great-grandkids, she's proud of her family and the business they've built. I wish Daddy was here. He started out, we started out with 40 cows when we started, got married. 62 years ago. We wanted her to come last time, but last time she said, well, it's your business. I said, no, it's our business. It's the whole, it's a family business. To get there, to get a legacy plan in place is going to take a lot of work. The family now has to assemble all of its documents, mortgages, long-term leases, operating agreements, current estate plans, and irrevocable trusts. Each party must also define what belongs to the family business and what legally belongs to them. The biggest thing is we need to do is just, just get everything documented and get it in, get it in place and get it set up. I'm trying to get everybody, you know, the accountant and the, and the lawyer and attorney and everybody on, on the same page that we want to be on and not try to go to one and not with the other. You've got to get them all together in the same room and, and try to get it all documented so that it, 
one isn't contradicting the other one. One says this will work and the other one says, well, it will look up to this extreme. Hopefully, in the end, defining the boundaries will help set up a system for future generations to follow. My next guest has been a dairy farmer, an educator, and the Secretary of Agriculture for Pennsylvania. Now he's the Dean of Agriculture at Delaware Valley College, quite diverse, and those skills give him unique insight to help the next generation of farmers. That conversation, when Leave a Legacy, continues. Pioneer Hybrid proudly continues its legacy of supporting America's farm families by sponsoring the Farm Journal Legacy Project. This is our time to get the most out of every hour, out of every acre. You don't plant half promises, only the best solutions. We know the land, we know you. It goes generations deep. Right product on the right acre. It's what we do together. Match the right product to the right acre and you'll see results. Y-Series soybeans from Pioneer, for example. They're redefining yield potential field by field. Powered by our exclusive accelerated yield technology system, they're the next generation of high-performing Pioneer varieties with bred in pest resistance traits. It's easy to see why growers plant Pioneer brand soybean varieties on more acres than any other brand. This is our time to get the most out of every hour, out of every acre. You don't plant half promises, only the best solutions. We know the land, we know you. It goes generations deep. Right product on the right acre. It's what we do together. Match the right product to the right acre and you'll see results. Y-Series soybeans from Pioneer, for example. They're redefining yield potential field by field. Powered by our exclusive accelerated yield technology system, they're the next generation of high-performing Pioneer varieties with bred in pest resistance traits. It's easy to see why growers plant Pioneer brand soybean varieties on more acres than any other brand. When things change in our careers, sometimes we have to retool ourselves. That was the case for Russell Redding. He had to find a new job when a new governor was elected in Pennsylvania. Russell had been the Secretary of Agriculture. Today, Russell is retooling himself to better address the needs and meet the challenges of agriculture in the 21st century. Russell, growing up on a farm, then to a political career, now as the Dean of a University School of Agriculture, what do we do to maintain a strong, viable agricultural economy in the U.S.? Well, there's a lot of things we've got to worry about. You know, I think uh, most importantly, just having that appreciation for what agriculture has done for society. Uh, we have a, a consumer base today that doesn't always understand that or appreciate that. They know the benefits of it three times a day when they eat. But how do we make sure that they understand the, the larger issues of agriculture and the importance of protecting that industry because that's what it really is going to take to make sure that we can actually transition it from one generation to the next. But it's about finance, it's about uh, making sure the farmers who are in that business receive credit for what they're doing, it's making sure that we've got sort of the public policies that are supportive of the industry, recognize it as a business, it's a business without walls but every bit of business, the same principles apply, you know, access to capital, access to markets, labor. Uh, so we've got to be prepared to sort of manage all of those uh, competing pieces uh, to ensure that agriculture uh, thrives. It seems like there's some, you use competing, it seems like there's competing stories about what agriculture is today. The consumer has one and the industry has one and sometimes, well, they're definitely not the same and even within the industry there's different stories. That's part of our challenge, I think, as an industry to sort of convey to consumers sort of what is agriculture because if you've got a group of 10 people, there'll be 10 different definitions of agriculture. It's based on their 
world, you know, where they touch it, about what they've heard about it, who they uh, are influenced by, uh, and so forth. But our challenge as an industry is how do we sort of sort through that and make sure at least on the production side, mm -hmm. the industry side, we're, we're conveying all of that, uh, that full cornucopia of agriculture, because I think that's part of what we need to do. The other component is I think we really need to be clear about who is in this business of agriculture. And it looks very different today than it did 20 years ago and 50 years ago. And looking forward, it will be again. But they are all in this business of ag. And how we present that, I think, is really part of telling the story of agriculture. Now, down to when we talk about succession on this show, that's really where it is. How do we tell a better story at home or to our young people like you at the university so that we, we help that next generation look at the profession of agriculture and the career opportunities that are out there? Yeah, the, I mean, there's, there's great uh, you know, employment opportunities in agriculture. I mean, some of them are on the farm, and certainly that's the base. We want to make sure that that remains strong. But for some of those family members who are looking at agriculture and supporting those who are back of the farm or that production system, there's great opportunity in there. We need to be talking about what those opportunities are uh, versus simply saying, well, you've got to come back to the farm. You've got to come back and do this you know, because I'm a sibling. Well, maybe. Maybe that makes sense, and they're the tough conversations you've helped us sort of manage through with the Legacy Project, and you touch on those. But I think making sure that as you know, farm leaders, we, we present that full scope of what is agriculture and the employment opportunities of agriculture is part of getting to the transition conversation. Because for some, it'll be a return and engage. and others, it'll be engaged, but they're not returning. They'll be supporting the larger uh, enterprise of agriculture some other way. And some of those may be return, engage, and grow something different. And I'm not just talking exactly. about crops. Yeah. So. Uh, exactly. There'll be some other enterprise that will be every bit as crucial to you know, keeping that, uh, that business uh, here for the next generation as the last one. Okay. Okay. So how do we help, say, dad or mom or grandparents understand that story or or help them tell the story mm -hmm. of, of what the future may be in agriculture? Well, I think there's, uh, and I've thought about this, I mean, one of the things is, as an FFA member back in mm -hmm. my local chapter in, in uh, Gettysburg and through the State Association, and for 30 years I've been involved, uh, I mean, there was probably a moment when we were in the FFA uh, as a member talking about the future and projects that there would have been an appropriate time to talk about sort of where I fit, okay. right, uh, okay. in that conversation, but it would have been the segue to where else you know, could I fit in, in the future of agriculture? And I think that was a missed moment. That was a teachable moment that we probably need to sort of recapture uh, if, if we're engaging folks today at, at, at the FFA or 4-H level. But it's about a conversation of, of what is agriculture first, right? Right. In all of these different pieces and where people sort of, with their own sort of you know, career wishes or uh, um, competencies and skills, where they fit in that lineup. Where does that conversation start? It starts at home. I mean, there has to be an appreciation at home first for what is and what's okay. possible, okay. right? Based on what was. But where are we going to go? And those conversations play out a lot of different ways in, at the dinner table and in other settings. So uh, very important conversation, but it begins at home about the possibilities. Thank you very much, Russell. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. When we come back, Russell and I will discuss professional development for today's motivated agripreneur. This is our time to get the most out of every hour, out of every acre. You don't plant half promises, only the best solutions. We know the land, we know you. It goes generations deep. Right product on the right acre. It's what we do together. Match the right product to the right acre and you'll see results. Y-Series soybeans from Pioneer, for example. They're redefining yield potential field by field. Powered by our exclusive accelerated yield technology system. They're the next generation of high-performing Pioneer varieties with bred-in pest resistance traits. It's easy to see why growers plant Pioneer brand soybean varieties on more acres than any other brand. simply better forages. 
that's serious business to pioneer. Advanced agronomics, nutritional expertise, and silage management practices. We're talking more than 25 years of focused dairy research to develop the best corn silage hybrids, alfalfa varieties, and inoculants that fit your operation. Hey, they all gotta eat. Get more from your fields, more from your cows. We'll back it up with the service you deserve. Simply better forages. Only from Pioneer. Russell, I'm a student at the university. I have big designs. I want a career in agriculture. I want to respect where my parents have brought me, you know, what, respect what's brought me here. How do I bring up this conversation, especially knowing all the challenges that we face as an industry out there? How do I, how do I bring this up at home? That's a great question because it's, it's an awkward point, right? Because it's a recognition that, you know, you've learned something, uh, you, you, you've heard somebody speak, it's intrigued you about what, you know, is going on in agriculture and how do I introduce that to somebody who hasn't necessarily heard that conversation. Mm -hmm. Uh, but it's an important one because I think it speaks to this, uh, you know, all of these pieces that have brought uh, mom and dad to be successful. Right? There's a lot of folks who have influenced that and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you want to continue that in some way, but it needs to go just a little different direction for you uh, from a career standpoint. So I think part of it is sort of being upfront with the conversation and then looking at home as sort of the safe harbor to sort of bring those points up, talk about the differences. Uh, trying to find the linkages to the past. I mean, because they're not just new ideas, they're deviations from what was. Mm -hmm. But bringing that up and saying, you know, if we did this maybe a different way, you know, it would fit for me professionally or would allow us to take the business a different way or financially would be a benefit to us. But you've got to sort of look at home as the place you can have that conversation. Uh, and then sort of build it out from there as to how that would potentially look on the farm. And maybe, maybe I don't expect instant change. Would that be, I mean, maybe when I come back, I learn the business from the other side and then we start to grow it from there? Yeah, I mean, I think it's, uh, transitions are about sort of managing expectations, you know, and you've got this expectation that somehow you're gonna do, you're gonna step into the business, but it's gotta look differently than what it was, you know, for you to be successful, or at least from your standpoint of being successful. So honoring that history, I mean, understanding the current dynamics, but talking about where those potential opportunities are in the future. I think bridges this uh, generational conversation we need to have about uh, the farm and, and what it needs to look like to stay in the business. And maybe I'm stepping in at a different place so I can start to drive some of the outside influences or differences, if you will, kind of incrementally over time. Is that, is that right? Yeah, I mean, you're going to bring a perspective in to that business that isn't there right now, and I think that should be valued. Uh, in managing that, I mean, I know it's awkward just because you, you want to you know, be respectful, but it's about sort of being honest about where the business is and where the potential is, not just today and tomorrow, but 40 years from now. I think that's what we need to sort of manage in the conversation. Perfect. Thank you, Russ. Thank you. If agriculture had rock stars, Temple Grandin might be one. She's a tireless advocate, well-informed and entertaining. Legends of Leadership is next. This is our time to get the most out of every hour, out of every acre. You don't plant half promises, only the best solutions. We know the land, we know you. It goes generations deep. Right product on the right acre. It's what we do together. This is our time to get the most out of every hour, out of every acre. You don't plant half promises, only the best solutions. We know the land, we know you. It goes generations deep. Right product on the right acre. It's what we do together. simply better forages. 
that's serious business to pioneer. Advanced agronomics, nutritional expertise, and silage management practices. We're talking more than 25 years of focused dairy research to develop the best corn silage hybrids, alfalfa varieties, and inoculants that fit your operation. Hey, they all gotta eat. Get more from your fields, more from your cows. We'll back it up with the service you deserve. Simply better forages. Only from Pioneer. So you can see all around without moving his head. So how do you know where he's looking? His ears. He points his ears where he's looking. See? He's looking at you. And he's looking at those cowboys. See, now I've got his attention. Now he's looking at me. You may have seen the HBO film Temple Grandin. She's a tireless advocate for the humane treatment of livestock. I got a chance to sit down with the real Temple Grandin to discuss the future of animal agriculture. I think what agriculture needs to do is look at everything we do and say, if I brought my wedding guests out from New York, Chicago, or LA, what are they going to think? And if you're squirming at the idea of showing it, then you need to be um, uh, changing what we're doing. We've got to be showing what we do. Now, this latest fiasco with um, two states wanting to pass a law making it a felony to take undercover video, that's the worst thing that egg could do. The New York Times got a hold of that, and uh, that's like saying we're guilty. And I wrote a rebuttal to that saying egg needs to be opening up the door because uh, people in the cities, um, when it comes to big egg, what, what they think is bad. And the only way to turn that around is to open the door. And one of the ways to open the door is electronically. Who do you admire and why? Well, I've always admired um, Albert Einstein. Uh, well, and the thing is, uh, when I wrote my book, Thinking in Pictures, in the mid-90s, I looked up a lot of biographies of famous people that were quirky. Einstein had no speech until age three. There's many school systems today where he'd probably be diagnosed as being on the autism spectrum. He certainly didn't have a normal speech. You know, possibly Mozart. Now, I'm not going to name any of the live people that are out in Silicon Valley that are probably on the spectrum. But you take out a few social circuits, then you get uh, geek circuits, and if you didn't have these people that are interested in things, we wouldn't even have a, a video camera to record this interview on. Because who do you think made the first stone spear? It wasn't the social yakety yaks around the campfire, that's for sure. What is your single most fulfilling achievement? Some of the most fun times in my life was when I worked on supervising construction of some of my facilities. I really liked working with the hands-on construction guys. Uh, it was really fun to see a drawing that I'd made get turned into an actual thing and then do the equipment startups. But one of the most frustrating things that I had was I'd get put in something really nice and really beautiful and I'd get it running and I'd get it running absolutely perfect. And I'd come back a year later and the handling had gotten rough and bad. And what had happened is they'd slowly regressed back into these bad practices and they didn't realize it. And then in 1999, um, I worked with McDonald's, Wendy's, and Burger King on implementing their animal welfare auditing. You know, when you've got a big companies like that insisting on things being done right, that can really make change. And I developed a very simple scoring system for evaluating slaughter plants. Like if you have more than three cattle out of 100 mooing and bellering as they go up the chute, you fail the audit. If more than one cattle out of 100 falls down, you fail the audit. Sort of like traffic rules. You've got to make certain numbers. And when you had a big companies enforcing this, I saw more change in 1999 than I'd seen in my entire career beforehand. And so that what, what those audits did is it made people manage things. You know, they had the hardware, because I had a lot of the plants had really nice facilities. They had the hardware, but they weren't managing it. And the thing is, you manage stuff that you measure, and that helps to, re to prevent bad from becoming normal. Thank you. Dr. Grandin is an authority on the humane treatment of animals. She tells it like it is. When we come back, I'll have a few closing comments. This is our time. 
to get the most out of every hour, out of every acre. You don't plant half promises, only the best solutions. We know the land, we know you. It goes generations deep. Right product on the right acre. It's what we do together. Match the right product to the right acre and you'll see results. Y-Series soybeans from Pioneer, for example. They're redefining yield potential field by field. Powered by our exclusive accelerated yield technology system, they're the next generation of high-performing Pioneer varieties with bred in pest resistance traits. It's easy to see why growers plant Pioneer brand soybean varieties on more acres than any other brand. Simply better forages. That's serious business to Pioneer. Advanced agronomics, nutritional expertise, and silage management practices. We're talking more than 25 years of focused dairy research to develop the best corn silage hybrids, alfalfa varieties, and inoculants that fit your operation. Hey, they all gotta eat. Get more from your fields more from your cows. We'll back it up with the service you deserve. Simply better forages. Only from Pioneer. Closed captioning is brought to you by Pioneer Hybrid, helping you get the right product on the right acre. Science with service, delivering success. Succession starts with a dream and a desire to see the operation continue beyond this generation. If multi-generational success is your intention, share it with your family. Learn their goals and create a plan of action. A succession plan is far more than legal documents and a life insurance policy. It will promote operational integrity, enhance your financial security, and prepare the next generation to lead. Coming up next time, you'll meet Indiana farmer Doc Cottingham. You may remember him as Machinery Doc, a former columnist for Farm Journal Magazine. Like you, he's starting down the path of succession. We'll visit with the family to discuss their long-term goals. Until next time, I'm Kevin Spafford, helping you to leave a legacy.